This video is going to be the first of several that I'm going to make focusing on the Tascam Porter Studio 424 Mark II. This particular video is going to serve as a case study on how we can go about fixing a printed circuit board that is either damaged, as in cracked, or actually snapped. When I bought this unit off eBay, I was aware that it had an issue not powering up. Uh, recently, I uploaded a video about testing the slow blow fuses that are inside the transformer and also the fuse that's inside the plug. I've previously had 44 Mark IIs in my workshop and really all they needed was a bit of a clean and a new belt and they were fine. So I was hoping that this was going to be that simple and it wasn't. I'm aware from being in Facebook groups and reading forums that there have been quite a few people who've had trouble getting this unit to power up despite checking the fuses. I'm also aware of all the broken down units that are for sale in the UK. I don't always buy them because I don't always have the money to, but uh, the 424 Mark II is one that seems to be sold with that I can't get power out of this description in the listing more often than some other models that I see. And I think I've established why that is, and it's to do with the way that the power transformer is mounted inside the machine. Here is the PCB into which the transformer is mounted. What's unique about this model is, for a start, a lot of Porta Studios don't have the transformer inside the machine. They'll have an external AC to DC transformer that you plug straight into the power socket and then there's a, a cable terminating and a two-pin socket that goes in the back. Other units I'm aware of having an internal transformer, well, the 144, the 244, the 246. But those three models also have a metal chassis, so the weight of this big fixed magnet and a lot of coils of copper here, they're mounted directly to the metal. The 464 also had an internal transformer, but if you care to look at a freeze frame on any of the videos I've done opening that unit up, you'll see that the transformer's kind of attached sideways and it's fixed to a stiff metal plate which is attached by four quite widely distributed screws to the bottom of the plastic case and although there is a circuit board into which the pins of the primary and secondary transformers are mounted that pcb is sort of sideways you know like the cassettes here and the bottom boards here and so any stress that the 464 receives isn't really transferred in any significant way to the printed circuit board Whereas this one, granted there is a metal plate on the other side of the lower plastic case, but you can see that the, the weight of the transformer is borne by this rather flimsy fiberglass printed circuit board. So what I discovered in opening this is, perhaps you can see there, that's one of the mounting screws. Can you see there's some hairline cracks from there? They actually spread out right across here. I don't have a schematic for this model, so I was just going point to point from where the mains electricity comes in to the power on off socket and then following that point to point. And when I got to about here, which is the primary coils of the transformer, I found that there was no continuity between this contact and this contact here because the crack had basically broken the electrical connection between the power into the board and the primary coil of the transformer. So I rather suspect that a lot of the time when you see 424s with power issue that it may be that they've been dropped or had some kind of a jolt and so the weight of this has actually damaged the circuit board into which it's mounted. Certainly that's the case with this one. I didn't film the repair as I was doing it. I did take some still photos so I'll try and cut those in post-production. First of all I got some desoldering wick and a hot soldering iron and removed any excess solder from there. I then scraped away this, let's call it a green substrate, I think that's fairly accurate. You can actually scrape that away with, I mean this is an X-Acto blade but you could use any cheap scalpel. But I've got a spares board here so I can just show you. So you can actually scrape that away so that the copper tracks are exposed. Put a little bit of flux on there first then you can solder to it. I've taken wire, wrapped it in around the primary pin here and sort of shaped it with a pair of pliers so it goes along the exposed track here and then I've soldered it. So really it's just this one broken contact that's causing the problem. But you can extend this idea to do much more elaborate repairs. One time I was working on a Tascam 246 and I had the monitor boards out and I actually stood on one, snapped it clean in half. It took a long time, but I mean, I had about 15 repairs like this.
bridging all the contacts and the two broken parts of the board and then I got, I can't remember what I used, maybe it was wooden splints or something, glued the other side um, of the crack just to give it some physical strength, put it back together and it worked fine. So if you find yourself with a printed circuit board that's actually snapped, don't despair, it can be fixed, it's just going to take a bit of time.